Good day grade 11s. Welcome to the next lesson exponents. Today we're going to be looking at negative exponents. So let's look at the basic rules. The basic rules ba say, and I'm going to break it down a little bit easier than that before we even look at that, that a to the negative n really means 1 over a to the n. And what this minus means is that you're actually inverting it because what we're doing is we know that this is actually implied one day. Because if I say to you 2, the number 2, the 2 is actually implied to be 2 over 1, okay? So 6 over 1 is the same as 6. So a is the same as a over 1. So now if I go a to the minus 1, I'm saying it's 1 over a to the 1. And this n is the power that it's 2. So if we look at this basic example here, you've got a to the minus n over b. What has it done? It's taken it to the other side. It's basically gone other side of the quotient line. So therefore it is, or the fraction line, therefore it is 1 over a to the n to the b. But it works both ways. If you have a negative on the denominator, then what does it do? It takes it up. Okay, right. And then finally, same as the other rules, the product rule, if you've got a over b to the negative n, then obviously by the product rule that becomes a to the negative n and b to the negative n. So they've got a to the negative n, b to the negative n, but what does the negative mean? It means you need to take it to the other side of the, fact, of the fraction line. So this becomes basically 1 over a to the n, so therefore it's a to the n, and there's b to the n. So the negative just means that you're taking it to the other side of the fraction line. Let's do a couple of examples. So if we had y to the negative 7, remember there's an applied 1 over here, so that is the same as 1 over y to the 7. Similarly, remember what we just said, that the negative just means that we are swapping it over. So what does that become? That becomes x to the 5 times by 1, but it's x to the 5. And again, we're going to do exactly the same as what we did in the previous example now. What happens is, this is going to go down to the bottom, and the negative at the bottom means it has to go to the top. So therefore, we've got x to the 9 over x to the 5, I mean x to the 4, and we are not finished because now using our basic quotient rule, this becomes x to the 9 minus 4, which becomes x to the 5, okay? Let's look at solving this one now. We just simplify. So the first thing I do, as always, is I look to see if I can cancel anything, because canceling is one of the favorite things I have to do in algebra. And we can see that 12 goes into four, 24 twice. So I get 12 goes once, 24 goes two. So I'm already left with two, x to the six, and what does this x to the minus eight mean? The minus eight means I take it to the top, so it becomes times by x to the eight, which then can be written as two, okay, times by x to the 6 plus 8, which is 14. I just want to show you something else about this. If we left it as 2x to the 6 over x to the negative 8, and we use this quotient rule over here, do you see it would become 2 times x to the 6 minus minus 8, which becomes 2 times 6 to the 6 minus times minus is a plus, so 6 plus 8, which becomes 2x to the 14. And the reason that's important is because one day you're going to do examples where there's loads of these things. And if you can simplify it by bringing everything to the top and just adding and subtracting as required, you'll actually realize that these exponent problems are actually really easy. Let's look at another example, another couple of examples. So if we go over here, again, first thing I'm going to do is factorize out my numbers. So 3 goes into 12 four times. So what am I left with? I'm left with x squared y to the negative 3 all over 4 x to the 6 y cubed. And if you're feeling intimidated, what we can do is we can now take the negatives to the bottom. So we're left with, okay, x squared 4 x to the 6 and then y cubed times y cubed, and what do you do with that? We add the indices, so we're left with x squared over 4x to the 6y to the 6, 
and then we know that that becomes, we can cancel that out so that it becomes x times x over 4x to the 6, y is to the 6, so those cancel and you're left with a 4. But let me show you the other method which I really like and I think it will help you a little bit. If we go back to this original question, let me just write it out again, 3x squared y to negative 3 over 4x to the 6 y cubed. Now if you, oh sorry that's a 12 that's the original question. If you take the numbers, separate them out. So basically you've got 3 over 12 which is a quarter. So we've got a quarter times by. And then we use the basic quotient rule. So you've got x squared minus 6 because the 6 is at the bottom times by y to the minus 3 minus 3 because that's minus 3 minus 3 because that's the bottom. Then do you agree you've got a quarter x to the negative 4 4, y to the negative 6. And then since we know the negative means that it has to be at the bottom of the fraction, if it's at the top of the currently, we know that that becomes 4, x to the 4, y to the 6. So I don't mind how you do it, there are lots of different methods, but as long as you're obeying the rules, you can do any of the methods. Let's have a look at this question. Now again with this question, remember what we did was we said the product rule, this negative 2 applies to every single thing in the bracket. So let's do that. That becomes 2 to the negative 2 times by x cubed to the negative 2 times by y to the negative 3 to the negative 2 which then becomes 2 to the negative 2 becomes um, what does that become? It becomes 1 over 2 squared. x cubed to the negative 3 becomes, basically remember we, what do we do? We multiply these out. So it becomes x to the negative 6 and we multiply these out and it becomes y and minus times minus is a plus. So 3 times 2 is 6. So if we had to rewrite this, we would have our fraction, 2 squared is 4 and the 4 is at the bottom. The x to the negative 6 means, because this is an implied 1 over here, means that that goes to the bottom as well, so it's x to the 6 and then it's just y to the 6 at the top. Okay, not too difficult, eh? Hey? Okay, so if we look at this question, it looks a little bit scary, but it doesn't have to be. Um, let's just have a look at this. First of all, the negative over there tells us that this whole thing needs to be swapped over. So everything at the top needs to go to the bottom and everything at the bottom needs to go to the top. So let's do that straight off. So we've got 3a cubed b to the 4c cubed all over negative 7a squared b cubed c to the naught all to the power of 4. Right, now what I would do is I would simplify the brackets before I multiply everything to the power of 4. And I'm going to use the quotient rule. So first of all I'm going to go 3 over negative 7. I like to keep my numbers out. And then a to the 3 minus 2 is 1. b to the 4 minus 3 is 1. You don't have to write them, I'm just writing them so you know what I'm doing. And then we've got c to the 3 minus 0 is 3. All to the power of so then what do we have? We've now got minus 3 over 7 to the power of 4. Then we've got, remember that this applies to each one of these, so it becomes a to the 4, then it becomes b to the 4, and then it becomes c to the 3 minus 3 times 4 is 12. And then we pop this in our calculator because this is a negative, but you're doing it to the power of 4, it goes away because a minus times a minus is a plus, times a minus is a minus, times a minus is a plus. Okay, so that goes away. Anything, whenever you have a negative, anything to an even power will always get rid of the minus. Okay, 3 to the power of 4 is 81, and 7 to the power of 4, 7 to the power of 4 is 2401. 2,401 and then these are all would be at the top of our fraction so just be a to the 4, b to the 4, c to the 12. Now grade 11s you're welcome to do this the long way where you first take this all to the powers of negative 4 and then you multiply it out and then you cancel afterwards. That's not a problem. I have no problem with that. I'm just doing what I find to be the simplest and easiest. As long as you obey the rules and come up to the final, same final answer, you're doing it right. Please, oh look there's another one. 
Right, so let's look at another example. Now again, what does this minus tell us? The minus tells us that the whole thing is going to be swapped around. So we're going to go 3a squared b cubed c to the 7 all over minus 2a cubed b squared c to the 0 all to the power of 2 and remember we're going to separate out our numbers and we are going to go right. So this becomes minus 3 over 2 and then we're going to use the quotient rule so it becomes a 2 minus 3 is minus 1 b 3 minus 2 is just a 1 and c 7 minus 0 is 7 and it's all squared so then if we square all of this it becomes minus 3 over 2 squared a to the negative 1 squared b to the 1 squared and then c to the 7 all squared and then what do we do? Now we square this so it becomes minus some of the minus the plus 3 squared is 9 over 4 a to the minus 2 b squared and c to the, what do we do with these? We multiply them, c to the 14. And what does this minus mean over here? It means it must be taken to the denominator. So we've got 9 over 4, a squared at the bottom, b squared, and then c to the 14. Okay, so grade 11s, what I want you to do is I want you to just go practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get at these. And remember, to use all your rules and to learn them properly. Have a great day.